What's up guys, today No Phil, we're gonna be doing the starting room only challenge, but with a bit of a twist. We're doing no gobble gum and no perks. This is actually part two of the series. Originally I did all the Chronicles maps. You can see that up on the screen or down in the description below. I'll be ranking these five DLC maps on the following. The difficulty, the enjoyment rating, and the X factor. Let's get into it. At last place is surprising candidate, Gorod Krovi. With a difficulty rating of seven out of 10, it had our highest ranking difficulty score. The reason being, no optimal training location, the map is essentially broken up into three parts. The swamp area, the memorial area, and the long strip beside Quick Revive and the Shiva. I honestly opted to train beside the Shiva, even though it probably wasn't as ideal as I needed it to be. With the dragon fire coming in every so often and making the zombies a mess of exploding unibombers, using the whole map to train definitely felt the most natural, but around round 8, the zombie spawns took too long, so by the time you got to the sewage, 4 new ones spawned, blocking the way, and you know how it is with the RK5, more than 4 zombies on round 8, you're not going to be able to get through. Next up with the lowest enjoyment rating out of any maps, a 5. I feel like there was really no synergy when it came to the challenge on this map. After I had my three attempts, I definitely was not begging for more. It had nothing special to keep you engaged at all times. The several lackluster training spots I found difficult. The X Factor ranking on this map was third highest with a 7 out of 10. This map had several factors that contributed to its score, including the Dragon Breath. Another unique attribute of this map was the level 9 dog drown. First of all, I enjoyed this game mechanic tenfold over the annoying Locust. And on top of that, having the dogs around on a higher level made it a lot more satisfying to play because they actually had health opposed to normal. It took almost a full clip of a Shiva compared to the regular single bullet. After adding together the average round scores of 7.6, Krovi ended with a total score of 13.99. Your hands are positively filthy! It takes more than a little slap! At 4th place, every map at once, but really only one map, Giant. Giant had the lowest difficulty score out of any maps with a 4 out of 10. I mean, I don't think this would come as a surprise to anyone, the map is, well, Giant, making it easier to train compared to a lot of the other maps. Another thing I found that made the game easier was towards the end of rounds when zombies were done spawning in, is you could kind of cheese the game by running towards the stage, going right, and hugging the chain link fence. The zombies would run up the stage and allow you to just shoot them, and then you could come around the left side of the stage again. I only tried it a couple times after figuring it out because obviously I'm not going for any world records, I'm just here for fun and cheesing the game wasn't really any fun to me. Another odd mechanic I found is when I was training over by the left side of the map near the concrete, if you hug the wall really tight, zombies wouldn't come up those stairs and they would just get stuck there. This definitely helped at the start of rounds because zombie spawn waves were way thinner than they should have been. But again, I only did this for one round. Next up with the second lowest enjoyment score with a six out of 10, this map again had nothing captivating when it came to this challenge. Another reason it ranked so low was even though training was enjoyable at different points, the mechanics of just being able to cheat the game was pretty lame. With the lowest X Factor score by far, a 1 out of 10, there was nothing unique going on at this map during this challenge at any time. Overall, adding together the score rounds with an average round of 11.33, and then adding the total map score, the final score was 14.33. Getting into the top three and coming in at third, Dur Eisendrock. With a difficulty rating of six out of 10, Dur had some really good training routes, as far as a small map goes. Optimally, if the zombies didn't spawn on the mountain and climb up the railing behind you, the potential on this map would be limitless. In saying that though, the two main spots to train on this map were very convenient and having the balcony with jumping access allowed easy escapes. Eisendrack had the highest enjoyment rating out of all the maps with an eight and a half out of 10. Everything about this map was enjoyable. The training routes felt natural and clean, but it was still challenging enough that it didn't feel monotonous like Giant. I think what also played a big role in the enjoyment was the two layers of the map, making it feel more spacious, when in reality, it is a much smaller map. For X Factor, it earned itself the second lowest score with a two out of 10. Nothing was dynamic about this map other than the tram that would come up and spawn you a random power up, but I feel like this always gave you some false hope that you were about to get something really awesome like the death machine or nuke but everyone who's played this knows you're getting the double points or the carpenter. It could have had a really interesting dynamic if there was a box in the starting room because the tram has the ability to bring you up the fire sale power up. And I think for this challenge, it would have been a lot cooler, obviously, if you had that chance to get the tram and then get a cool gun out of the box. But all in all, there was really no X factors when it comes to Dur. Overall, with the average round score of 9.33 and adding in the final map score, Dur ended with a 14.83.
In second place, one of the best maps ever created, Revelations. Rev had a difficulty score of 6 out of 10, earning itself a just above average difficulty rating with good reason. Rev feels like a very big map for this challenge, but in reality it's almost broken into two smaller maps for training. This map was another map that was really enjoyable to do full room trains on. There was just two problems with it. Up on the later rounds when you had a big train coming, it was hard to get from one side of the truck to the other with the amount of zombie spawns they had. When you came from the right side of the map where the big red pillar is to the other side, zombies could spawn from that doorway, the window, and that cave. So really, when you bring the end of one of your trains to that side of the spawn room, it's a whole lot of chaos. In second place with the second highest enjoyment rating, Revelations was a blast. What isn't there to love about this map? The optimal training combined with the large feel and awesome cinematics made my three attempts on this map fly by. The X-Factor rating again coming in at number 2, Revelations was packed with exterior challenges. A main one being the turret that you could activate by doing that ritual. The ritual itself was really cool and it's best to do that on an earlier round because the RK5 can take out those little demons. And I know it opens a door behind you but since no zombies can spawn out of it and I just simply didn't go in there, I felt like it didn't impact the challenge at all. Another reason I didn't mind doing it is because TSP did it and he's the zombie's forefather so I think it's allowed. Once you actually complete the ritual and you have the turret itself, obviously it aided in the later rounds to clear out some of those zombies. Rev also has the dogs round with the locust, which isn't my favorite, but it does help to mix things up. It also just has, in my opinion, some of the coolest looking zombies in all of Nazi Zombies history. So once you combine those zombies with the apothecans and keepers that are flying around the map, it's a pretty crazy cinematic. Overall, Revelations only missed the top spot by 0.4 points, and it was solely due to me not making it higher. I definitely could have if I played again with smarter training and better use of the turret, but sticking to the rules and only doing three attempts is I think is the best way to actually judge this challenge. So in saying that, the round score average was 9.66, combined with the overall map score, giving it a 16.99. Give me something to shoot. Coming in at the number one spot, and the reason half you clicked on the video, and the other half you skipped to this part in the video, Zetsu, Zet, Zetsu, Zetsu, no Shima. With a difficulty score of five, Zetsu was a really good map to train on. Whenever a map essentially has a circle with some sort of pillar in the middle, I find the training really good. And Zets had two of these spots, along with somewhere you could jump off if training got too difficult. Unfortunately in my experience, however, if you did use that out and jump down that little waterfall thing, the game got a lot harder. Trying to salvage the train you made if they were able to push you all the way back into the water was a nightmare. Enjoyment had a score of 7 out of 10. There's multiple things going on in this map that I will get into later that had a really big impact on the score being high. But overall, just from a challenge and training perspective, it probably would have ranked lower. The overall feel and training on the map wasn't all that natural or satisfying. However, the multiple challenges within the challenge definitely bumped the score up. At the number one spot with the highest X Factor rating, 9 out of 10. The amount of crazy and interesting things you can get up to in the starting room alone is actually quite impressive. The first surprise and challenge is finding the bucket and the hearts to plant your seed and water it. You want to do this as early as possible because the longer it's in there, the better reward it will give you. That added on an interesting dynamic because you wanted to wait as long as possible but not too long that you die before opening it. In my experience though, I wouldn't wait too long personally because it seemed like all I was getting was the sniper rifle or the RPG. Another X factor this map had was the swamp monster who came out every time I played because I chose to train right by his lair. He just added another aspect to the challenge that just really helps break up the games. There's all sorts of other crazy stuff going on, with the dogs around being spiders, that plant opening up and eating zombies sometimes, swamp monsters pimples blowing up and making you choke to death. It was really interesting the entire time I played. Overall, with the highest average round score, the rounds being 11, 11, and 9, giving it an average of 10.33, added in with the map score, gave Zets the number one spot with a 17.33. Hey guys, thanks if you made it this far in the video, really appreciate it. If this gets 50 likes, I'll do a part two, either of all the Chronicles maps again, but with Gobblegum, or me and the Abligator are gonna try and attempt beating every Easter egg in Call of Duty history in order. Let me know down in the comments what you wanna see.